Hello everyone, my name is Atish and topic of this learning video is Gauss Seidel method. This is the fourth method that we are learning under the topic solution of simultaneous linear equations. Okay, but to study the Gauss Seidel method, there would be a term name as there would be a term name as diagonally dominant matrix. Diagonally dominant matrix. Okay, so this is the terminologies that you may encounter while uh, solving the problems with the uh, on Gauss Seidel method. So let me tell you what is this uh, diagonally dominant matrix. As the name itself suggests that the matrix is dominated by the diagonal elements. Okay, so let us see the bookish definition. Uh, an n by n matrix, an n by n matrix is said to be, is said to be diagonally dominant, is said to be diagonally dominant if an n by n matrix is said to be a diagonal dominant matrix if if the absolute value of the diagonal element a i i is greater than or equal to sum of the remaining element uh, sorry let me write <coughs> j is equal to 1 to n j not equal to i okay and sum of the elements so sum of the elements say a i j where j varying from 1 to n and i varying from i also vary from 1 to n okay this is diagonally dominant matrix okay so it is uh, not necessary that it should be greater than it should be greater than or equal to now to make the idea more clear let me take an example uh, let me take an example so for example now you are going to tell me whether the matrix is diagonally dominant or not okay so i have a matrix say a is equal to i can make my own example 15 3 7 then uh, 2 minus 4 2 and 1 7 minus 8 okay now we just pause the video for a few seconds and try to work out with this definition and tell me whether this matrix is diagonally dominant or not if you follow this definition okay uh, this is uh, an oral question to any one of you okay so i hope uh, you have got the answer so what answer you are getting diagonally dominant or not diagonally dominant diagonally dominant very good so this matrix is is diagonally diagonally dominant diagonally dominant matrix now whenever you are giving the answers you must justify your answer why why i am telling this matrix to be a diagonal element because what is the diagonal element here here it is 15 so i can write modulus of 15 is greater than or equal to sum of the modulus of the remaining element 3 7 so obviously 15 is greater than 10 now look at this what is the diagonal element this is my diagonal element so modulus of 4 is greater than or equal to sum of the remaining element 2 2 so plus 4 modulus of minus 4 is plus 4 greater than or equal to 2 plus 2 4 so this also holds and the last one what is the diagonal element minus 8 so modulus of minus 8 is greater than or equal to modulus of 1 plus modulus of 7 okay so this is the justification you can give uh, whenever it is asked like whether the given matrix is diagonally dominant or not 
okay so i hope the this definition and the simple example is clear to you now let's move on to uh, the working rule of gaussian method so i'm just going to make a small change in the heading gaussian method and here i am writing as working rule working rule so like the other uh, learning videos in this learning video also we having uh, we are having a uh, working rule which comprises of the following steps so step number 1 says write down the given equations in matrix form write down write down the given equations don't write in matrix form you just write down the given equations okay equation number 1 equation number 2 equation number 3 so just give the uh, naming also numbering also now step number 2 says uh, check for the diagonally dominant okay check for check for diagonally dominance dominance and arrange accordingly so second step says once you have written the equation just need to check whether it is diagonal dominant or not and uh, if it is diagonal dominant try to arrange sometimes equations are arranged sometimes not arranged so you need to arrange if the equations are in the given problem if the equations are given that they are, are arranged so no need to arrange but sometimes there would be a jumble of equations so you need to arrange the equations okay and step number 3 says uh, take take initial approximations take initial approximations it is a it is an iterative method and like the other three method other three methods are different but this gaussian method is an iterative method okay so that is the difference between the uh, three first three method and this method okay so take uh, initial approximation as y0 equal to 0 and z0 equal to 0 so this is the third uh, third step now fourth step says uh, iterations to follow now after the you have taken an initial approximation then you have to start taking iterations so the fourth uh, step is iterations to follow iterations to follow till till the two consecutive till the two consecutive till the two consecutive iterations iterations agree 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 to what agree for agree for the values of the values of x y and z instead of writing x y z let me write down agree for the values of unknowns that is the most precise one okay so what you need to do is you just need to write down the given equation check the diagonal dominant if if the equations uh, or with the help of equation if you find that uh, it is diagonally dominant then only the gaussian method is applicable otherwise not uh, after a uh, diagonally dominant check you just have to arrange the equation if it is already arranged well and good if not then you have to arrange then third equation a uh, third step says you have to take the initial approximation as y0 0 and z0 0 okay and then followed by the number of iterations till the two consecutive iterations agree to the values of unknowns what does it mean uh, agree for the values of unknowns uh, suppose uh, when you solve the problems there are six iterations so we'll see the fifth and sixth if the fifth and sixth iteration giving the same values of or exactly same values of x y z or there is a very uh, negligible uh, difference between 5 and 6 so you can 
uh, stop there or you can terminate the process and whatever values you are getting you can write down as a solution okay so this is what we have in this learning video so thank you for watching this learning video keep learning keep enjoying thank you